Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of Guards, Guards by Terry Pratchett. So I will start by reading the blurb. This is where the dragons went. They lie, not dead, not asleep, but dormant. And although the space they occupy isn't like normal space, nevertheless they are packed in tightly. They could put you in mind of a can of sardines, if you thought sardines were huge and scaly. And presumably, somewhere there's a key. Guards, Guards is the eighth Discworld novel, and after this, dragons will never be the same again. So, I'm a big fan of the Discworld books. I think I've read all of them by now. I haven't read every Pratchett novel, and actually there are some sort of Discworld spin-offs, like some of the science of Discworld books I haven't got to yet, but I am slowly getting there. Guards, Guards is the first Ankhmore Pork City Watch book, which is like my favourite sub-series within it, and I reread this via audiobook for the Rereadathon of 2019, which is organised by Alex Black and some other people, originally created by Cassie reads. So I took some notes while I was going through this and I'm just going to take you through some of those notes and then at the end I'm going to give it a rating. So the very first thing I should mention is that line on the blurb. This is where the dragons went. That's actually the way that the book starts. So the blurb is actually like a truncated version of this very first paragraph at the start which I quite liked as well. I just wrote down what a start. Uh, so in terms of some of the characters here we have uh, Sam Vimes of the Ant Morpork City Watch. He's actually still a drunk in this book. In later books he kind of goes teetotal but really as we're introduced to the Night's Watch they're kind of failing nobody really believes that the, the Night's Watch can do their job you know the criminals pretty much laugh at them Sam Vimes who's their leader he's a drunk and they only have two other members of, on the team they have uh, Sergeant Colon and uh, Corporal Nobby Nobbs and then in this book uh, Constable Carrot comes along as well. So Constable Carrot is uh, he's like a six foot four Adonis, very charismatic guy, but he's also very naive. He was actually raised by dwarves in the mountains of Uberwald, and then when he moved to Ankh Morpork, he went there, you know, because everybody uh, thought, you know, he can't spend too much time amongst the dwarves. It's just not right. He thinks he's a dwarf, but he's, he's obviously not. He's, he's a fully grown human. And uh, somebody in one of the villages tells him that, you know, the watch is what you join if you want to be a man. Unfortunately, this information is hundreds of years out of date and so we get a lot of humor as Carrot with this really naive personality tries to you know assimilate himself into the city so for example one of the first things he does is he uh, he arrests the head of the Assassin's Guild the problem is is that uh, being an assassin is legal as long as you're a member of the guild the guild actually polices itself and you get this great moment where the head of the Assassin's Guild complains to the patrician Lord Vetinari who's in charge of the city and he says he paraded me through the streets like I was some common murderer when he's not he's an assassin and that, that comes with a certain you know level of respectability I suppose it's a very interesting world where kids get sent off to train to become assassins because it's a great way of moving up in the world we get some great quotes as well, so um, one of the quotes was, a good bookshop is just a gentle black hole that knows how to read. And in this book, and indeed in the Discworld in general, books distort space and time. So we have the Unseen University's library, which is the library for, you know, where all the magicians train. And they have all of these magical books, and yeah, they're acting like a black hole, essentially. We also have a secret society in this as well, and the Grand Master of this society doesn't want people who think for themselves. He deliberately wants the stupid, vindictive people that he can mould to his will. And and throughout he's kind of amazed about how easy it is to manipulate people into thinking the way he wants them to think you know and I wrote down as well I love how Pratchett plays with tropes so this is the one where again Carrot comes to the city and uh, it's kind of hinted that he's the scion the returning king and we do actually also have an, a, a way where the, this this grand master and his brotherhood they try and place their own puppet king in you know because when there's a dragon along everyone knows somebody comes along and kills it and then they get made the king so that's part of the grand master his plan to uh, to summon this dragon using magical artifacts and then to place his own his own king in uh, Ankh Morpork. Fun fact for you as well that uh, uh, Vimes, Sam Vimes, his uh, ancestor was old Stoneface Vimes who committed the last regicide and killed the last king of Ankh Morpork. And ever since then, there's been a, a patrician. Carrot's almost irritatingly naive in this book, and he does get better as later books go on. I think. Pratchett almost relied on it too much to build his character in this one. This naivety was a big part of his character and it just started to grate after a while. But again, it does get better in later books. We have Death is here as well, as he is in most Discworld books really. There's a lot of death going around. So for example, we've got this dragon going around killing people and people are being, you know, literally incinerated and then they're looking around going, huh, ah, oh, that used to be me. Oh, who are you? And then Death is like, I am Death, come with me. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you'd 
Death uh, in all the books I think is quite interesting. All of his dialogue is in capital letters. I don't know if I can find any just skipping through, um, but that's quite cool. This also is the one, I don't want to spoil things too much, but basically one of the characters is the bad guy, and I remembered that they were the bad guy because they're later kind of replaced by somebody else who does their job, and I remember, vividly remember from my, you know, enjoyment of the Discord books, the second person, the person who succeeded them, so it, I immediately remembered who did it, but you know, that's that's not, not so much a problem here. We had a great line with Vimes, which I thought was some good character building and refers to his alcoholism. He said he wished he'd had time to drink dinner. So Carrot's actually in love with this dwarf girl from back home called Minty, and he asks after her in all of the letters he sends to his parents. He's also sending money home to his family, which is a, a very dwarfish thing to do, but I also think it's quite an interesting way, like it's a very immigrant thing to do, you know, to go to the big city and get a job and then you send your, your, some of your money back home to your family, which I think was quite cool, but also very reflective of who Carrot is as a, a person. But he doesn't realise that things with Minty just aren't going to work out because he's not really a dwarf himself, but he just can't see that. And uh, I mean, it's a long distance relationship as well, it's never going to work out, and sure enough she does get phased out of later books. We have uh, Detritus is in here, he's a, a troll who later joins the City Watch. In this he's actually working as a bouncer at the Mended Drum, which is uh, one of the, the sketchier pubs in Ankh-Morpork. Not a good place to be drinking uh, late at night. We also have this point where the kind of the culprit, the guy who is the uh, Grand Master of this cult, he actually brings attention to himself in a way, or he hints at what might be going on. And it is the truth, and he'd know, because he's organising it. And I've not noticed that in Reads before, but again, because I knew that he was the one who, who did it, it made me kind of on the lookout for these little tells. We also have uh, Lady Sybil as well, who uh, eventually Vimes goes on to marry her and they have a child. And uh, in this book they kind of meet each other, which I thought was quite nice. And also there's this quote that is not from this book, but that Pratchett said in general. He says, there is sex in the Discord books, it just happens a few pages after the end. And that's kind of implied at here, you know? There was another great quote as well where Vimes was saying, uh, he remembered how much he wanted a puppy when he was little, but then they were starving and anything with meat on it would do. We have this great interchange between Kara and the librarian of Unseen University who happens to be a monk, no, an ape, sorry. You can't call him a monkey, he will rip your arms out of their sockets. He's definitely an ape, monkeys can't, yeah. Monkeys aren't 300 pounds and uh, built like a sack with muscles in, is I think how uh, Pratchett describes it. So uh, Carrot says to him, you summon the watch because someone's taken a book. You think that's worse than murder? The librarian gave him the look that other people would reserve for people who said things like, What's so bad about genocide? I also love that all of the clues are there and it does kind of work as a murder mystery style read. Not necessarily a murder mystery because it's again it's all about unless the murder weapon is a dragon you know. But uh, all the clues are there and uh, some of the characters react in certain ways that don't give it away on a first read but totally stand out in a reread as well. Another great interchange here between Vimes and I guess this was Corporal Nobbs and he goes Sodding assholes! You are in uniform Corporal! Sorry! Sodding assholes, sir! I thought, I thought as well, Lady Sybil is just this underrated, badass female character in literature. I know there's a lot been said about, you know, the strong female character, but Sybil really is a badass. I mean, she runs a sanctuary for dragons. She's very much, almost like a spinster. She's devoted herself to the study of dragons. She's not afraid to muck in, literally scooping out the horse shit, you know. They go to the Shades, which is one of the really dodgy parts of Ankh-Morpork, and then she just sort of, just sort of scoffs at the idea that anything bad could happen to her, and she's like, well, I'm with you fellows in uniform. And, the, you know, the Night's Watch are kind of like, yeah, that's, that's what we're afraid of. But she really just doesn't give a shit about anything, and uh, yeah, Lady Sybil, man. Hats off to Lady Sybil. Uh, people were singing a song called A Wizard Staff Has a Knob on the End in this as well, which is kind of a recurring gag recurring kind of musical gag throughout the Discworld. And I actually used to have a CD of uh, music of the Discworld where there was a recording of that, of them singing A Wizard Staff Has a Knob on the End. It goes vaguely like, A Wizard Staff Has a Knob on the End. A Wizard Staff Has a Knob on the End. You know, there's, there's probably more lyrics, but I can't remember. There was also this bit where like this sort of sentient lightning hit the library. And uh, we have this interchange here. Uh, what does it want the library for? Asked Sybil. Oh, maybe it wants to look something up, Vimes said. Don't be silly, there's just a lot of books in there. What would a flash of lightning want to read? Something very short. I really think you could try to be a bit more help. Just great dialogue, Pratchett is a master of it. 
There's also this bit where it's explained that we all have natural alcohol in our bodies, but Vimes doesn't. So he needs two drinks just to catch up and to be sober. The only problem is, is that sometimes he doesn't get the dosage right. We have this bit as well, which I think is very typical of religion, really. Religious sacrifices were allowed as long as they use volunteers or criminals, but that was okay because under most of the religions, refusing to volunteer was punishable by death. And then we finally have this bit towards the end as well, the, the, all this talk of uh, having a million to one shot, you know, it's a million to one chance but it might just work, but if it's, you know, no one ever heard of it being a 998,371 shot, but it might just work. And uh, they realise that the odds of, uh, of Colon shooting the vulnerables, the vulnerable part of this, this uh, dragon with a bow and arrow, it's not quite a million to one, so they start adjusting the odds, uh, for example by making him take the shot on one leg while wearing a hat for example, which I just thought was hilarious. So all in all, great book, uh, great instalment in the Discord series, a uh, great start to the City Watch books as well. I know a lot of people kind of feel intimidated by the uh, Discord books and don't know where to start. I would say this is a good one to go for because it'll introduce you to Ankh Morpork. It's the first book in the City Watch series, which is arguably the best sub-series, at least in my opinion. And so, uh, yeah, you can pick this up and then carry on, which I will be doing later in the year. So for more uh, of the rereadathon, I'm going to be reading more Discworld. So can't wait for that. Rating time, I will give this a solid 4.5 out of 5. Uh, not quite a 5 out of 5 as potentially some of the later City Watch books are, but it's, it's certainly up there. So there we have it, that's what I thought of Guards Guards by Terry Pratchett. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.